Okay, so let's talk about the big Goomba. Most people use one of the small Goombas that comes out for Kaizo Trick. We want to use both. That makes it more interesting. So in this example, we hit the one, the other one comes up from below. So how does that look? How does that work? We have it set up without the saw there, okay? So we're just gonna do this so you can see it, okay? So we have the Goomba set up here, right? So as soon as we bounce on it, boom, they, they fly off. So we give reason for the player to go up high. We, we, that's why I put on the on-off switch, right? We have the player jump up high enough so it gives them enough time to get the small Goomba over here. The other one in the meantime, if you watch, just scuttles along down on the, uh, here, let's put a little, let's put a little platform here so we can see it. So you watch the other one go under and then it flies up. Now, it has the fast conveyor because it needs to hit there in time. So by the time you go up and over, we want the player to get full jumps in order to hit that because there's a, there's technically a saw down here when we put it. The one way just stops him from going over there. Now let's look at another example. Here's a second example of something slightly modified. This time we have the Goomba, the lower Goomba fly even further over and we have an in-between jump. Okay, so we're on this one. And then the, the play continues from there. So essentially this kind of got a little cheesed here because technically you could hit this one and hit this and just shell jump up if you got a really high shell jump. So how could we avoid that? We could always add another saw or something that may stop the player from going over or discouraging them from going over. So maybe we have a... Uh, maybe we do something that discourages like the saw here, let's see. Okay, so you get the idea that we're using both the small Goombas. Let's take a closer look at this without the saws. Okay, for a third example, we're gonna look at another big Goomba that's on top of a little Goomba because we need to hit it twice. So in this instance, I'm gonna remove the saws because the saws are only there to stop for cheese, right? So we're gonna look closer at the mechanic here. The idea is the player comes up here, hits that twice, comes up, and then it flies up. Now, obviously we wouldn't hit the on-off switch that time because it's technically activated, but let's, for argument's sake, uh, remove this. So that's there because when the player comes in, they're coming in on a different switch state. Generally, right before a CP, you want it so that the blues, the blue tiles are off and the red ones are on. This way, you don't have to worry about any contraptions if, if the player starts at a different CP. So up, over, down, and up. So what does this look like? Up closer. Now you could use a, a semi-solid, although I used clouds because it's only two tiles from the bottom of the screen. We want the player to go up high, so that's why I put the switch up there. With the side spring, just adds a different element to it, right? And we always want to indicate where it's supposed, supposed to land. Since it's not perfect, that's why I did the outline of this box. Okay, for this mechanic, the second one is a little more complex looking. Obviously, this looks like kind of a crazy contraption, but I'm going to hope to break this down a little bit for you so we can see a little bit closer. I'm going to remove the saws because the saws are there for cheese, so we don't want any cheese to be seen. So we're going to remove these saws so we can see what's going on here in real time. Okay, no saws. Now, what's going to happen is we want the player to not jump further than a tiny hop on this second beetle. So we don't want the player to to jump higher than literally just allowing Mario or Toadette to just hop over it. So, so we want that double hop. So let me put a little platform here so we can see it. Okay, so we have the shells that are following the same track. Now what is this setup? 
This is a small ghost over a big ghost over a little ghost. The only reason I did that was because I want the shell to fall straight down and this spring has to be on a conveyor going over because it, it allows it to go over just enough so that when we bonk, bonk the shell, it'll hit off that spring. If you don't put it on a conveyor, it'll just fall straight down. It won't go down. So now these, both these shells, both these shells are following the same track. So how do I get them to do different things on the same track? That's where the, the red and blue tiles come in. So what's in here, you're asking? So there's a spike ball here, and that's strategically timed. So when the shell hits it, it changes the state, right? So the initial shell, the first shell, is gonna activate this spike. It's gonna fly over here, ride along these red tiles, and stop right there. Now, because it flies up and over and down here, both shells would be poised to go over there. However, by the time the second shell gets midair over here, this spike ball is activated, this on-off switch, and then it continues over here where we get a second jump, right? So let's see that section in real time. So there you go. You see it where it, it the first shell went over the red, the second one went over to the next part, no. Obviously, it continues from there, but that's really cool. Um, and again, the reason this saw has to be here is because we don't want the player to hold A. The timing has to be perfect. So at no point is the player holding A to hit all that. Let's take, another, let's take a look at another example of that specific mechanic. Let's look at a similar example that uses a very same mechanic. So. This one starts off, this is for a team shell level, it starts off with a, a shell jump, but the player ends up here. So we put an on off switch and a coin up here because we wanna require the player to get to the exact same height every time. If you don't put something for them to jump over when you're doing these double mechanics, the shells won't line up correctly. So let's look at it as if we were coming over the hill. We hit over here and then it continues. Now how in the heck did we do that? There's a lot going on here, right? So we have the same setup with the small ghost, big ghost, right? Because we don't want the player to land on top of this spring. So that's why the big ghost is there. We've got the conveyor and the spring over here. Uh, this is just a Kaizo block to stop the player from going in there. Now, we have an activated on-off switch. We have a shell that, let's look at this real closely. The first one, if you notice, hits this block, dropping the blaster. So when that drops, we're now changing the trajectory of the second shell. Let's look at that again. It goes down. This The first one bounces up here. That's why there's a semi-solid up here. So the, the first one comes down, hits this, flies up here, and then lands over here. And we want the player to land a little bit above the ground because it's not possible if you just stand on this ground to get up there you can't get over that. So it doesn't matter that there's no spikes or munchers down here, it's okay. And even if the player tried getting like super smart or something, I put a Kaizo block there anyway, so you, you can't physically do it. Now let's follow the second shell. The second shell does what? Goes underneath, right? So it lines up underneath. Let's take a look at this second one. And sure, I'm just gonna put a block there for the sake of standing there to watch it. Okay. So the second one rides under here. Now what's going on over here? The shell flies over this, right? And let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at, let's replace these spikes for now with blocks. And we're just gonna put these here so we know this has been technically replaced. I've already uploaded this, so it's okay. All right, so let's take a look at it. The second shell again. Okay, so for the next one, this is also very funky. You can combine a lot of different things into one block. So what's in these blocks, you're asking? Well, just shells or shell nets, really. Now let's take a look at what happens when we hit these shells, right? So we hit this, each one activates the one over the other. You can do a lot of different things with this. 
Now the cool thing is with the top one, the top one flies up a little bit further, so I have that one going on tracks going to different different areas. And because they're different heights, they're gonna fly into different areas. So let's remove this first one over here, right? So again, we're using this on-off switch to time when these red blocks disappear, right? So let's take a look, let's take a look at that again. So the first one flies over, the second one flies down because the timing of that on-off switch, pretty cool, right? So the second one, let's remove this. This is there for cheese, okay? We just got a conveyor belt, another note block, and then it lands over on the edge. We always wanna make sure we have the bones on a curved track, so this, and with a muncher over. So this way the height is only half as high. So that's pretty, pretty standard. Okay, so we have the first shell going here, the second shell going down here, the third shell going up to the top. Now the interesting thing is I had you can control the timing with conveyors or with throwing in different blocks. You might have to play with that depending on where it's going. So what do I have going on here? I got a few different things. This one is gonna activate a note block, which is gonna drop just a regular buzzy and he's gonna start walking and end up over here by the time we get over here. The, the other, other shell is gonna eventually just fly off here and just land in, in this spot right here. So let's take a look at this whole thing in action. And there's your third shell right there. 